And Colorado is a state largely made up of unaffiliated voters who can participate in political primaries, but not assemblies. But as Democrats and Republicans meet this weekend to ultimately decide who ends up on the primary ballot, we're taking a look at how the U.S. ended up with two major parties we have now and how it's shaped the politics of our country. Here's Newsy National Political Correspondent Alex Miller with a deep dive. It's 1787. Our founding fathers are putting quill to parchment to form a brand new government. Nowhere in this pivotal document is there any mention of political parties. That didn't stop the formation of two distinct visions for a young nation. First were the Federalists, led by a man whose popularity has risen thanks to a Broadway musical. Alexander Hamilton, the first Treasury Secretary. His party believed in a strong central government and a looser interpretation of the Constitution. But the working class went against the Federalist elitist business-centric ideals, and they rallied behind Thomas Jefferson to form the Anti-Federalists, later dubbed the Democratic Republicans. They believed the government was too powerful and only benefited the wealthy. But by the early 1800s, the Federalists dissolved and the Democratic Republicans split in two. That's when politicians started campaigning with all the mudslinging and ad attacks we know today. In 1828, a bitter, hard-fought campaign gave rise to President Andrew Jackson and, what historians argue, the beginning of modern American politics. A lecture from the Khan Academy put it this way. In the previous election, all of the candidates had been Republicans in one form or another, but now the Republican Party is going to start to fade away, and the Democratic Party will come to the fore. And this is the same Democratic Party that is still in existence in the United States today. But not everyone agreed with Jackson's visions, which included expanding slavery and resettling Native Americans. His opponents blasted Jackson as a tyrant and founded the Whig Party to oust so-called King Jackson. As the Whigs expanded, so did America. The Democrats of the South wanted slavery to spread into new Western states. But the Whigs were so divided over the issue, the party collapsed. Slavery supporters joined the Southern Democrats, while the anti-slavery proponents created the Republican Party in the North, aka the Party of Abraham Lincoln. The Civil War was the beginning of a major shift among both parties. Government spending during the war made some Northern Republicans rich. They used their influence to help enact policies protecting big business and wooed new black voters as a means of punishing the South. The Republican agenda was doing great until the Depression hit. Lecturers at the Khan Academy gave this history lesson. So the pro-business policies, the lack of regulation in the 1920s, leads to the stock market crash of 1929. And it was a Republican president, Herbert Hoover, who was in the presidency at the time of the crash. So Americans turned to Franklin D. Roosevelt, a Democrat, to help get them out of the financial crisis. Roosevelt expanded the role of government, creating services like Social Security. That's how Democrats rebranded as a party in favor of a hands-on government. But by the 50s and 60s, the Democratic Party began to crack. Newer party members like John F. Kennedy supported civil rights, but older Southern Democrats were pro-segregation and felt the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was government overreach. They abandoned ship for the Republican Party, joining the fight for less government and no integration. Over the next 30 years, black voters would switch their alliance to their new advocates, the Democrats. And by the 1980s... The first real tax cut... The American family has come under virtual attack. Small business will never be relegated to a back seat. Ronald Reagan's policies created a Republican platform that lasted four decades. But parties are still undergoing major demographic shifts. President Trump upended Republican ideals by appealing to voters' mistrust of the government elites. Now, worsening political divisions have some wondering if there's another way to make more voices heard in our government. Alex Miller. Newsy.